the dice model of uh, global warning can then be used typically under two scenarios. The first one is uh, the baseline or business as usual, that is, we are running the model uh, without considering any uh, global warning, uh, uh, any climate policy. That is, uh, there is no specific carbon tax and uh, the model is let not under uh, optimization of welfare, but under uh, optimization of profits of uh, individual firms. Uh, and uh, under this uh, uh, scenario, we obtain some results in terms of uh, uh, emissions that uh, uh, the society would continue to uh, emit uh, in terms of greenhouse gas and more specifically of CO2 and uh, uh, the uh, amount of uh, CO2 that would be uh, resident in the, in the atmosphere and consequently the uh, environmental pressure that would, uh, would arise. I'm not uh, 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 commenting in particular the, uh, the, the individual numbers because this depends on the version of the models. This one here that I reported here are of a model that is uh, uh, starting to be, to be dated. But the general trends is that uh, if there is no, the general message is that if there is no uh, um, carbon policies in place, emissions will continue to rise. So there is no really no problem of fossil fuels that become scarce. The problem is not the amount of fossil fuels available, but the problem is really of uh, uh, too much uh, uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So emission would continue to rise and this would imply uh, in steadily increase in in uh, CO2 in the atmosphere just to give you some some reference uh, we are around 400 part uh, per million of CO2 in the in the atmosphere but what is and of course there will be an increase in uh, in uh, in the temperature in the average temperature and put attention that we are speaking here about average but uh, well, one could say that five degrees is not a lot. Uh, having five degrees more is not a lot, but this is an average in the world. So when then you consider individual places and individual moments in, in times, this five uh, uh, degrees average really is really a, a lot. And uh, what is more, perhaps of all this number, more interesting is that uh, something that is uh, starting to get more and more uh, uh, acknowledged uh, uh, by uh, more recent models is that the demand would not be uh, even across the world but uh, is most it will mostly be concentrated in tropical regions that are also those that are lower income countries so the countries that have uh, contributed less to the problem of global warnings will be those that will face the higher, uh, the most, uh, the worst effect. The uh, other scenario that uh, the DICE model is typically uh, run with, uh, so to compare it with the baseline, is the so-called optimal scenario. In this uh, uh, scenario, instead uh, we let uh, uh, the model uh, find uh, the welfare uh, maximizations, and uh, in uh, this uh, uh, case, uh, uh, we have two uh, effects. The first one is uh, two we have two efficiency conditions. The first one we didn't saw in our model because it was only one country, one region, is that uh, the implementation of the uh, of the mitigation must be efficient across all industries, countries, and, and the times. And so the marginal cost to reduce the emission of CO2 must be equal in each sector and in each country. The second one, uh, uh, the second efficiency condition is that we had uh, the occasion to appreciate with our simple model was that the marginal benefit of the mitigation in terms of uh, reducing the damage of climate change must be equal to the marginal cost of the mitigation itself. 
And how this is implemented in the DICE model? Well, it is implemented a carbon tax. And how much should be this carbon tax? Should be such at a level such that uh, these efficiency conditions remain uh, true. So in a quantitative terms, how much should be these uh, uh, emissions? Well, the key message here is that the emissions uh, uh, for uh, efficient implementations should uh, increase shouldn't uh, the, the reduction uh, sorry not the emission the reduction of the emission so the implementation is the carbon tax should uh, uh, increase uh, with, with times and uh, this would lead a, a benefit compared a social benefit compared with the baseline it's Aside the, the numbers that are, uh, uh, um, are relative and are uh, specific to the model, the part is that uh, these benefits that we have in this case, uh, the model uh, report three trillion, is uh, uh, really is uh, the results of two uh, things. One is the benefit of the re reduce, reduced emissions, but the other one to this. Uh, benefits you have to reduce uh, to reduce the the cost of the abatement to have a net benefits in this case of three trillion of uh, uh, of dollars and uh, to obtain uh, the, this benefit uh, a carbon tax should be a, a set and this carbon tax should uh, increase uh, with a, a rate between two and three percent each year and uh, just to make a comparison i take the i went to the website of the u.s environmental protection agency i saw that Currently, they are computing a, a social, what is called the, the social cost of carbon, the, the cost uh, uh, which the carbon tax would lead to an optimal, uh, uh, optimal outcomes in terms of welfare of $40 per, per ton in 2019. And this is not very different from the $27 in 2005, increasing then at 2 or 3 percent each year. Uh, but it's not uh, uh, is is something that is expected as uh, the EPI use uh, uh, the dice model as one of their main models. So it is uh, uh, expected that the value they 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 use as a carbon price it is somehow related to the results of the dice model, and uh, this price has an upper limit. It is the cost at which Another technology would become alternative and more convenient than, than burning fossil fuels. And here uh, the, uh, the price, uh, the, the limit is pretty high to 1,000 uh, per ton of carbon. More recent models include, uh, consider technological progress and uh, set this amount, this, uh, uh, this uh, cap price at much uh, lower uh, values. And uh, using doing this, uh, this implementing this carbon tax, uh, we, there will be a reduction in uh, in terms of uh, of CO two uh, uh, of forty five percent by two thousand one hundred. With the notation, with the you have to put attention that is for a reductions in this sense uh, is the s optimal scenario compared with the baseline. And while in other, often you hear about the reduction of CO2 in terms, in historical terms. So we are, for example, the EU is uh, taking the, um, is taking the, the agreement to reduce 40% uh, uh, CO2 emissions in 2040 compared to 1990. So it is an historical uh, uh, comparison. While here we are comparing the optimal versus the baseline scenarios. And something that maybe is more interesting is even in this optimal scenario, we have a very strong increase of uh, climate change of 3.4 degrees again is it's a lot 3.4 uh, degrees of uh, incre average increase is a lot and this is because again uh, the, the 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 main idea of this model and it somehow it's also its main critics 
is that it consider mitigation as a cost. So you cannot mitigate all because if you set this one to, to zero, would be too much expensive. So the optimal is not to completely mitigate climate change, but make it in such a way that the cost of mitigations is equal to, to, to its benefits. Uh, in this slide, I put together all the, in a comprehensive way, all the criticism that has been made in the meantime to this model uh, that still won the Nobel Prize in 2018. The, the first uh, uh, criticism concerns the technological aspect. So there are technological innovations in the model in the sense that uh, si many parameters of the equations of the damage and and the cost of mitigations the parameters are dynamics but these parameters are completely exogenous while we it is reasonable to assume that uh, they depend on the carbon price for example higher carbon price will lead uh, firms to become uh, more efficient in their usage of uh, of uh, fossil fuels and this mechanism is not present in, in the model the second uh, aspect of criticism is that uh, the damage functions the technical damage functions are considered uh, uh, too low compared with uh, uh, with uh, uh, more modern uh, um, scientific uh, uh, knowledge and in particular not only the technical aspects are considered uh, that the parameter are too low, but also the approach that is taken to estimate the damage is somehow uh, questionable in the sense that they assume a risk neutral uh, approach while many of the um, of the damage is of a stochastic nature. And we know that uh, because uh, of the nature of the utility uh, functions of many of us. So if this one is the quantity of whatever and this is our utility, utility curves are typically concave. And from this, it results that many of us is a risk, uh, risk adverse. So we would prefer in case of uncertainty, uh, they have a lower value, but uh, uh, certain than have higher uh, expected value, but uncertain. And so they, when there is uncertainty, they estimated uh, uh, the major by a risk averse uh, uh, agent is, uh, is, is higher. The third uh, approach, the third uh, criticism uh, concerns uh, the, the equity uh, present in the model because uh, in the model everything is expressed in economic uh, uh, units and because they are the damage is uh, proportional to the uh, richness of the region uh, that is considered uh, for example the loss of a human life or the loss of a hectare of land in a rich region it can because it's in a, a, a proportional to the richness it counts more than uh, those in a poor region and we know that most of the damage concern poor uh, tropical regions and uh, uh, and in, in this way the model is not uh, uh, it can be questioned for uh, equity consider consideration although i have to say that here there is a parameter that uh, that remove uh, this uh, uh, this proportional to to GDP. Although it is not much used on the simulation of the model, in the model itself there is a parameter that uh, uh, that uh, that drop uh, uh, this uh, this aspect. The fourth and perhaps those that has the higher uh, importance uh, in terms of uh, quantitative uh, re con results is the discount rates because uh, the discount rate that is used in the in the simulation again it's not a critic itself of the model it is a critic of how the model is used because most of by their authors uh, uh, the results are given with uh, a, a return uh, in discount rate that is set equal to the return rate of uh, invested capital the market in interest rate and this is uh, relatively higher to what uh, uh, equity concerns this 
terms, uh, not uh, on a spatial scale, but on an intergenerational scale would, uh, would suggest. And uh, if we would uh, have um, lower discount rates, the damage, the future damage would account more. And so the uh, optimal uh, welfare will be reached with a higher uh, carbon tax.